Welcome. Uh, I'm filming this on April 20th. I don't know when you're going to watch it, but you need your notes. You definitely better take notes today. And uh, I'm going to put a bunch of stuff up here for starters. And then I need you to write stuff down. And then I'm going to I'm going to whip through stuff here. Um, just a bunch of uh, me demonstrating the process, I guess. So this is uh, lesson 70, solving radical equations. And let me define that. I give you my like method for approaching these problems, and then I'm just going to show you a bunch. Okay, so what's a radical equation? It contains at least one radical whose radicand, that's that check mark symbol thing, contains a variable. So you're going to have a problem with something underneath an X or a Y or an M or an N underneath the radical sign. And it's an equation, so there's going to be an equal sign in there as well. So uh, the examples that I'm going to run through would be the square root of 2x plus 3 equals 21. We might do one like this up here. 11 equals the square root of x minus 7 minus 2 outside the radical symbol. It could be cubed roots rather than square roots. Cubed root of 2x plus 1 equals 0. We're going to look at some equations that have radicals on maybe both sides. What do we do with that? If they're the same, like both square roots or a square root and a cubed root. And we're going to talk about um, when you get answers that don't actually work, extraneous solutions, and then uh, application in physics. Because I can think of um, equations from physics where you do have something that you have to plug in underneath a square root sign like pendulums and springs and things like that. that maybe we did in physical science or that you'll do in physics if you take a physics class. Anyway, here's the other thing that you need to write down. I've given you a four-step process for uh, going through these. I usually don't like algorithms, but I'm going to give you one today uh, just to give you a thought process to walk through as you do these problems. Some of them are easier than others, but all of them you should def definitely check to see that you have uh, done everything you're supposed to, including the last one, number four. So. If you want to pause and write that down, if you can squint and see all that. Otherwise, I'm going to talk it through. Suggested algorithm. That's just the process, the step-by-step -step process of getting to the solutions. Number one, you're going to isolate the radical, the thing with the square root or the cube root symbol, on uh, one side of the equation, one side of the equal sign. Similar to our process of, of what we do, if it was just x, we're going to get the part with x. Whether it's underneath the root sign or not, we want it all by itself on one side of the equation. Step number two, we're going to raise both sides of the equation to the power of the index of the radical. That's a lot of prepositional phrases there, so let me talk you through that. We're going to do the same thing to both sides. And the thing that we're going to do to both sides of the equation is not add something to both sides or subtract something from both sides. We're going to take both of them to the power of. So maybe we're going to square both sides or cube both sides, but we're going to do the same thing to both sides. Um, what do we choose to do? Well, it depends on what the power is. Is it the square root where they're going to square things? If it's the cubed root, we're going to cube things. That's step number two. Step number three, that kind of gets the x out from underneath the radicand, and now we can solve for x. However, we need to do that using the basic rules of, of um, order of operations and whatnot, and tools in our toolbox. And then you think you're done, but this is very important for today's lesson, that you don't just stop there and say, well, I got some answers, so I'm going to write them down, I'm going to move on to the next one. No, Braden, you need to check for extraneous solutions. You need to take your answers, you need to plug them into your original equation, and make sure that they work. And I'm telling you that today because there are some that won't work. Now you may do several of them in a row and you're like, it worked every time, I'm sick of checking. And then the next one that you decide to not do that with is gonna have extraneous solutions. And I wanna be able to show you why some of these have extraneous solutions. Part of the problem is when you take the square or you square root things, you kinda of mess stuff up, don't you? Because the thing could have been a positive or a negative and when you square it, you can't see that anymore. So there's some where you maybe you get an answer, but the graph itself is not going to work. Square roots and cube roots, um, they look different. Square roots, 
look like this, but cubed roots will go like this. So it depends on the power uh, as to how many answers you might have uh, and what the shape of that thing will be. Um, one's kind of restricted, the other one's not. So it definitely depends on what you're dealing with. And uh, we'll want you to use your, uh, your graphing calculator today to help you to demonstrate um, how you can find the solutions and why some of the solutions you get don't work in the real number system. Okay, isolate, raise, solve, and check. I'm gonna erase that and we're just gonna take these ones on. Maybe I'll leave the isolate, raise, solve, and check up there. But we're gonna follow this one, two, three, four step process to tackle some of these problems. Okay, so I'm gonna hit pause. I'm gonna clear this off and uh, I'm just gonna run through some examples. Okay, have you done any stretches today? Math stretches? Okay, all right. Onward and upward. Here we go. There's the first problem. Oh, looks like number one is already done for us. Number one, check. The radical is on this side. There's an equal sign. There's other stuff on the other side. Uh, all that's under the radical, so I've already isolated the business with X in it. Second, raise. Well, what's this? It's a square root, so we're going to square both sides. It makes this side pretty easy. It's just the square and the square root are going to eat each other. But over here, we got a square 21. You might want to use your mental math skills uh, to do that. Do you have any mental math skills? 21 times 21. 441. Okay, so number two, raise, we get... 2x plus 3 all by itself without a radicand equals 441, and now it just turns into a regular algebra problem. Solve for x, okay? Subtract 3, so that's 438 equals 2x. Divide by 2, x equals 219. That's number 3. Solve number four, check. I go back up to the original problem. I'm going to go two times 219 plus three underneath the root sign equals 21. And I'm just working this backwards. So I get 438 plus three. And uh, that was 441. We already did took the square of that. So the square root's easy. And 21 equals 21. QED, we did the fourth step and we verified that yes, that number works. Okay, there we go. We got the solution, but then we double checked to make sure that it was true. And it was true. Here's another one 11 equals square root of x minus 7, and then outside the radicand minus 2. So isolate. Okay, we need this all by itself, so we're going to add 2. 13 equals the root of x minus 7. Now we go to step 2. We've got to raise this to a power to get rid of that. It's the square root, so we're going to square both sides. 13 squared is 169. And now we just have x minus 7 all by itself. We need to isolate again, right? That's how we would solve. So we're going to add 7. 176 for x. That's number three. Oh, but wait, we need to do number four. All right, so let's do number four. Number four will be to double check. Okay, take this number. I'm going to plug it in right here. 176 minus 7 is 169. Square root of 169 is 13. 13 minus 2 is 11. 11 equals 11. That is true. That is a good solution. We can use 176. Splendid. Great. Wonderful. All right. Here's another one. Just looks a little bit different. Now we're going to up the ante. We're going to try to jog the brain here a little bit. We need to start off by isolating the radicand. I know it's got a cube there. Just hang on for a second. I need that and an equal sign and everything on the other side. So we're going to move that to this side and have a negative one and the cubed root of 2x. 
Step two, raise. Raise it to what power? Well, there's the index is three, so we're going to cube this side. And note the parentheses, we're going to cube this side. So on this side, the cube and the cube root eat each other. We'll have 2x. But over here on this side, it's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, which gives us negative 1. And now we've boiled it down to a simple algebra problem. We're going to solve for x by dividing both sides by 2x. Solution, negative 1 half. Let's go back and double check that. Put a negative one half in here and see if we can solve this thing. And that's multiplication. That's the cubed root of negative one plus one equals zero. And you're like, oh no, you can't. Yeah, you can. You can do that. It's a negative. Negative times negative times a negative, right? We can do that. We're supposed to get negative one if we cube, and we can. When we get the negative 1 equals negative 1, that's a good solution too. It works. Try it on the calculator. Take the square root of negative 1, cubed root of negative 1, and it'll give you negative 1. Square root 1, but cubed root would. All right, everything's good so far. And again, now we're thinking, what was the point of checking? Oh, it's when we get to the more complicated ones and we really have to pay attention to what we're doing because some of them are written with radicals on both sides. These ones get a little bit tricky and we got two classes of them. We're going to have ones that have the same index, like they're both got square roots or different indices where one's a squared and one's a cube or something like that. So here we go. Square root of 9x, when is that going to equal the square root of 5x plus 2? Okay, so we can do this in two ways now. We can do some algebra, or we can do some graphical analysis. And uh, so I'm going to clear out all the junk I got here, and I'm going to put a square root of 9x in for y1. I'm going to put the square root of 5x plus 2 in for y2. And then I'm going to give it a look for starters and see what these things look like. I got one curvy thing and I got another curvy thing. And I got a blue curvy thing and a red curvy thing. And what do we got there? They do crisscross each other. And it looks like they crisscross each other once. So it looks like there's one solution. There's one number I can plug in that makes both of these things true. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to cheat for right now. But I can tell that it's somewhere between 0 and 1. Okay, somewhere between 0 and 1. Isolate. Well, they're isolated now. One's on one side, one's on the other. That's great. Now we're going to raise. Because basically, if the square root of 9x, if it's equal to the square root of 5x plus 2, then 9x is equal to 5x plus 2, right? It's the square root of whatever's there is equal to the square root of the other thing. So we're going to square both sides. It keeps everything the same. That is the 9x equals 5x plus 2. And now we got a basic arithmetic algebra problem here. Let's get all the x's together. 9x minus 5x equals 2. So 4x equals 2. And uh, we divide and we say x is... Looks like the x's need to be one half. I'm going to double check. I'm going to calculate an intersection. And it gives me that, yeah, when x is 0.5, it's the solution to both of them. It ends up being equal to 2.1213, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I verified it where I checked it on my calculator. Let me check it on here. Go back to the original equation. Plug in a one half, and away we go. So we're looking like we're trying to take the square root of i over 2, and over here it's 5 times a half, or 5 over 2 plus 2. Well, that's 4 over 2, isn't it? And that means that this thing is equal to 9 over 2, and if we say this is equal to that, that is true. 
So our one half was a good solution for that one. Okay, so far we haven't needed the check, but we did it anyway, because now we get the yucky ones where the indices are different. We have to be careful. 3x plus the cube root of something. We need these things on opposite sides. So we're going to pick one of them and we're going to move it. And uh, honestly, it doesn't matter which one. Um, I'm going to move. I'm going to move this one over. I'm going to subtract this from both sides. And I, I could even move that over. That would simplify things a little bit, but not a whole lot. Okay. So what do I got? I got this. Minus 5 equals a negative. Now we're like, oh, what do I do next? And move that 5? Well, now it's like I got junk over there. And this is a cubed root. I'm not make that clear. This is the cubed root. So what are my options? Well, you do have, I mean, there are some mathematical, mathematical ways to do it, but at this point, the best strategy you have is to graph each side of this equation separately, and then we're going to look for intersections. Okay, listen to what I'm saying here. Um, I can't isolate anymore. I can't raise them to powers because they're different powers. So if I cube both sides, I'm cubing a square. I'm going to get fractional powers here. I'm still going to have problems getting to x. So what I do is I'm going to take this side of the equation. I'm going to say y1 equals cubed root of x minus 4 minus 5. I'm going to take this side here, negative. Okay, I want you to put that in your calculator. I want you to look at the picture, and I want you to decide how many solutions does this thing have, and about approximately what are they. I suggest that you pause before you do it. I type mine in. If you have a hard time finding that cubed root thing, just take x minus 4 to the one third power. Nevertheless, it would be alpha f2, or you go into your math category and you can find it. So I got my two equations in there. I just split it up into the left side and the right side. And now we're looking to where they're equal to each other. So it's graph time. And see what we get. That's a weird thing. It's way down there. And it does a little curvy thing. That's the cube version. And then there's the negative square root. It's going to keep going in that direction. So looks like there's only one intersection. And when I trace it, it seems to be about, looks like it's at 5. That's my guess. Okay, 5-ish. And let me double check that. So I'm thinking that x is 5. I'm going to put x is 5. Go back, go back to the original equation. I'm going to check to see if 5 would be a valid answer. All right. So 5. Square root of 5. Uh, 3 times 5, okay? So we're like, what's the square root of 15? I don't know. Plus the cubed root of 5 minus, oops, I was thinking ahead. 5 minus 4 is 1. Minus 5 equals 0. Okie dokie. Uh, what else? The cubed root of 1 is just 1. Is it not? Okay, so we've got square root of 15 equals, and then we got add 5 and subtract 1. I think I'm missing something here, aren't I? Well, maybe it's not exactly 5. Let me double check. Uh, hang on. Yeah, it looks like it's close to 5, but it's not exactly 5. That's why this isn't going to come out to be perfect. So if I go and I square both sides, I'll get 16 equals 15. So uh, it was close. It was actually about 5.18, which is a little bit better, closer to the exact answer. Uh, but there we go. I graphed it and find 
where those values are the same and here we'll get like an approximate number there is actually something that's out there i just could only get kind of close so five was a good guess but it wasn't perfect calculator give me the intersection gives me something that is better than my guess all right that makes it a little complicated but you could just grab those two sides of the equation and look for an intersection that is a strategy that you could use um, lastly, let's talk about the ones that have extraneous solutions. I'll show you what those look like and we'll talk about why. Maybe you can use your graphing calculator to explore that a little bit more. So the first one we've got here from the book is this. And you just need to put your thinking cap on here. You try to take the square root of something and then take away some more and that being a negative 8. So we got to think, what would we have to have for an answer here to take 4 away and have negative 8, All right? Looks like the square root of some number has to be negative 4. Well, we don't have a real number solution for that, do we? No, we don't. No, we don't. Okay, if I was going to graph this side and then this side, I would get something like this. I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I get negative 8, and then I get the square root of x minus 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to go like this. And it's never going to touch that line ever, not in the real number system. Now, if we give ourselves some imaginary numbers or some complex numbers, then it could be a solution for this because I want to square this. I want to square this. I'm going to have x equals this, right? But it probably have to be something like there's got to be an i in there somewhere. And not true, right? Now we can't graph that, so this one has no real number solutions. Just again, put it on your thinking cap. How could you take the square root of a real number and then take four away and have negative eight? Right? No real number solutions. Think it through. Uh, another one here, x plus 1 equals the square root of 2x plus 10. Okie dokie. So the, uh, the radical is already isolated. So now our job is to square both sides. And this is what we've got to do in this problem right here. Square both sides. We get rid of the radical. But over here, we've got to foil this. We get x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then we've got to have to move everything to one side. Minus 2x minus 1, minus 2x minus 1. Uh-oh. This says there should be two answers. One of them should be 0. What happens if we put a 0 into this? 0 plus 1 equals the square root of 2 times 0 plus 10. This is saying that 1 equals the square root of 10. And we know that that's not the truth. So that would be a tricky one too, wouldn't it? Where we get an answer, but uh, yet we've got some, uh, some issues. We've got some issues. Oops, I did some stuff wrong in here. That's why part of my issue. Though I can see what my problem would have been. Ah, 10. Okay, well, I go minus 2x, and then I'll go minus 10. I get x squared minus 9 equals 0. That's the difference of two squares. So this is x minus 3, x plus 3. Uh, my answer could be either 3 or negative 3. There we go. Let's, let's play around with that. we got to check both of those now. And, uh, okay, the problem was x plus 1 equals the square root of 2x plus 10. So I'm going to try uh, positive 3 first. 3 plus 1 equals the square root of 2 times 3 plus 10. That's 4. On this side we get 6 plus 10 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. That's a good solution. Three works. Now, what about the other one? 
Okay, well, let's go negative 3 plus 1 equals the square root of 2 times negative 3 plus 10. This side equals negative 2. This side equals negative 6 plus 10 is what? 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 does not equal negative 2. So extraneous extraneous solution. We found one that doesn't work. You say, no, that was a solution with algebra, but it's not a solution in, uh, in the real world. Double check on this. I can make one side of my equation x plus 1. I can make the other side of my equation 2 square root of 2x plus 10, 10, not 1. And then when I graph these things, there should only be one place where these two lines intersect each other. There's the first one, there's the second one. It looks like there's only ever going to be one. Negative 3 would be if this thing went uh, that way on the underside of it. There's only one place where those two things crisscross. Okay, got to be careful. I can't emphasize that enough. They're going to put questions in there where you have to actually find if that solution will work or not. And don't slack it. Okay. Application, physics, pendulum. The reason for is because of that L that's underneath the square root sign. Um, these ones end up being a little bit tricky because it's square roots and we're talking about time we can't have negative answers right we can't go backwards in time with a pendulum we pull it and we let it swing and we're measuring how long it takes depending on the length like a grandfather clock how long the length of the bob has to be for it to swing back and forth in a certain amount of time so if you're going to solve for l like you want to know how can i get this thing to swing back and forth and for it to take three seconds it's kind of a weird one but what if I want t to equal 3? How long was that? would that bob have to be? Swing back and forth, and it take 3 seconds to come back to where it was. I've got to do a little bit of math with this. So first of all, I divide by 2 pi. 3 over 2 pi equals the square root of. That's isolation. Secondly, I'm going to raise both sides to the power of 2 because it's the square root. So I'll do this, and I'll do this, and that gives me 9 over 4 pi squared equals L over 9.8. And then the final step would be to multiply both sides by 9.8. And I've got my setup. That's what I would need, and it comes to be about, I don't know. Let's do it really quickly. Fraction bar, 9.8 times 9 divided by 4 pi squared. Enter, and the length needs to be approximately 2.23, in this case, meters. It's pretty long pendulum for it to swing back and take three seconds. The cool thing is that if you do it one meter, that is almost perfect to get something to swing back and forth in a second. So it will be like half a second, one second, half a second, one second, if it's a meter long. How'd that happen? I don't know. That should be above and beyond what you need to do these problems. Did a whole bunch for you. They're just going to have different versions of these. Check for those extraneous solutions. Follow the suggested algorithm. Isolate, raise, solve, and check. Doesn't make any fun word. Do there and you should be able to get these done thanks i mean you need to thank me but we'll thank each other thank you